Applying math and science in your welding endeavors helps in understanding and solving welding problems. Proper shielding of the arc was found to be critical in the development of the MIG process. Early patents emphasized the need to prevent air from being pulled into the shielding gas stream by having non-turbulent gas flow. You learn in part one that flow rate should not exceed about 50 cubic feet per hour to maintain high quality wells. That it's flow rate that's set, not pressure. And that when gas pressure increases, so does gas volume. And that high pressure is needed to automatically offset flow restrictions when welding. Two of the pioneers who developed our understanding of how gases behave, Bernoulli and Reynolds, are introduced. Turbulent gas flow causes air to be pulled into the shielding gas stream. Air is 78% nitrogen, and it takes less than 2% nitrogen to cause internal well porosity. Mixing 2.5% air in the shielding gas stream is all that is needed to create problems. Osborne Reynolds in 1893 defined the velocity where smooth lamellar flow is transformed into turbulent flow. The Welding Institute in Cambridge, England showed that with a typical 5 8 inch diameter nozzle, 48 cubic feet per hour, abbreviated as CFH, was sufficient to cause turbulent flow versus the desired smooth lamellar flow. Tests made to see how much flow could help counter drafts showed in a 4 mile an hour draft, 45 CFH gave less internal porosity than 65 CFH. This validated the Welding Institute and other published information, defining about 50 CFH as the approximate maximum allowable flow. If the draft exceeds 4 miles an hour, a windbreak should be used. Who would set high gas flow rates? Unfortunately, most MIG welders do at the weld start. This is a gas flow graph of a fabricator making MIG weld repairs. Peak starting flows were measured in excess of 225 CFH, well in the turbulent flow area. And the flow was measured above 75 CFH for 4 seconds, pulling air into the gas stream, causing internal weld porosity. The welder knew the blast of gas at the weld start was causing internal porosity, since his welds often failed ultrasonic inspection. Questions are asked about setting MIG gas pressure. To set the record straight, for MIG and TIG welding, flow rate is set, measured in cubic feet per hour, not pressure, measured in pounds per square inch, or abbreviated PSI. This water analogy may help to find the difference. The pressure in a home water supply is typically around 40 PSI. If the faucet is open, just slightly to allow it to fill a box nine and a half inches per side in one minute. The flow rate is one half cubic foot per minute. Multiply by 60 minutes in an hour gives 30 cubic feet per hour. At this low flow rate, the pressure in the pipeline will remain at 40 PSI. Some confusion is created by a device used on many cylinder installations called a regulator flow gauge. It does set pressure, usually varying from 40 to 80 psi, above a very small orifice, typically 0.025 inch diameter. Note the output gauge is calibrated in CFH, not PSI. This device uses a principle called choke flow. More on that subject later. Another important principle defined by Daniel Bernoulli is when gas pressure increases, the volume of gas increases. If the absolute pressure doubles, so does the gas volume. Looking at the pressure volume implication in MIG welding, a typical large gas cylinder has a physical volume of 1.8 cubic feet. When pressurized to 2514.7 psi absolute pressure, divided by the atmospheric pressure of 14.7 psi gives 171 times the physical volume of gas or 308 cubic feet of gas. 
at atmospheric pressure, which is what you pay for. Look on the second line and note that in a gas delivery hose, that can be 6.44 times the physical hose volume of gas. And on the last line, accounting for a small amount of hose expansion, 7.3 times the amount of gas as the physical hose volume. Most of that excess gas blasts out of the gun nozzle at each weld start. Shielding gas control pressures are high versus what is needed to flow the relatively low flow rates of shielding gas required. Here's why. When MIG welding was invented, Engineers understood spatter buildup in the nozzle and gas diffuser and restrictions in the small gas passages in the gun cable could cause flow variations. The principle of choke flow was used as a method to provide automatic flow compensation. Here's how it works. The volume of gas flowing through an orifice is dependent on the upstream and downstream pressure. Bernoulli developed equations to show the relationship between gas pressure, volume, and flow. They define why airplanes fly. With this complex equation, the flow through the orifice can be calculated knowing the type of gas and the pressures. But we're not building airplanes, and this complexity is not needed for choke flow. An interesting phenomenon occurs when the velocity reaches the speed of sound in the orifice. It can't flow any faster. This is similar to why you see lightning before you hear the thunder. The thunder sound can only travel at the speed of sound, while light travels almost instantaneously. When the absolute pressure upstream of the orifice equals at least twice the downstream absolute pressure, this speed of sound velocity is reached. Then the flow is only dependent on the upstream pressure. Calculating choke flow rates uses a very simple equation where K is a constant depending on the gas used. As long as the pressure is above this 2 to 1 ratio, increased restrictions downstream will not affect flow. In a MIG welding situation, assuming an average 5 psi needed at the feeder to flow 30 to 35 CFH, then absolute pressure is 5 plus 15 for our purposes or 20 psi absolute. Twice that is needed upstream to have choke flow, or 40 psi absolute. To get back to gauge pressure, subtract 15 and you get 25 psi. Quality flow meters and flow gauges use pressures ranging from a minimum of 25 up to 80 psi. In summary, shielding gas should not exceed 50 CFH to avoid air being pulled into the shielding gas stream. In MIG welding, flow rate is set, not pressure. When pressure increases, gas volume increases in proportion. Also, high pressure was designed into MIG systems from the time it was invented to provide automatic flow compensation and assure preset flow is maintained while welding. In part two, we'll discuss the reasons for these restrictions and other shielding gas issues that will help solve welding problems. For more information on MIG shielding gas flow control and our patented gas saving products, watch part two of Welding Math Gas Flow and visit netwelding.com. Thank you.